we've got some really beautiful looking ambrosia or wormy maple and it's uh, it's got a lot of warp and twist to it. Our big planer can normally take that out with no trouble but um, sometimes it takes a little bit extra so we have to come over here to our big 20 inch facer our SCMI F520 Nova to do some hardcore board flattening. This is the wood we'll be working on today. Beautiful wormy maple. You can see how when we originally did a, a hit or miss plane on it, you can see where there's a lot of miss. You can see it's got a little rock and roll quarter of an inch, three-eighths of an inch. There's no way I would want to risk that going through the planer and left. So by far the best option is to try to get a flat surface, a, a skid mark, as I technically call it, to keep it from rocking. Then I can certainly put it through the planer, put that side down on the planing bed, plane it, and it'll come out perfect. Uh, the key is I don't have to do the entire face, but I do have to get enough for it to be flat. This is our facer. It's eight and a half horse, three phase, 220. It's got a 20 inch cutter head. I have removed the blade guard, but since I'm filming, I wanted to show you what it was doing. You can't really see that with a blade guard, a blade guard on. A good facer should make the board so flat that when you're done, it should suck down to the table, actually make it harder to push. A little bit of a vacuum going on there. These little air grooves are machined in there to let air get under the board and act like an air hockey rink. What I'm gonna to try to do where this kind of jacks up and try to get it where it sits down nice and clean on that other table. Try to get a good flat pass. Now you can see how it's a lot more stable. Just one pass did that. Put this away and we'll grab another one now. Oh, this is a joy. Same thing. Try to get it balanced up. Get it to go right across. Get it to hit. Bring it back and check it. Look at that. It's that flat, that quick. So it it did not plane or face the entire board. It's not the intention. You can see right here it missed completely but it did give me a nice, clean, steady reference face right here. This is flat. That means when I put this in the planer, it's got a flat face to run on. So that quick, I can go from a board that may not flatten out in the big planer or any planer to this one's guaranteed to come out perfectly flat.
so quick. Pretty flat. This is why you want a really wide taster as well. Notice how just one little pass gets a good face on it. It's not plain. This is plain. That one did it. That was a good one. Ooh, this is ugly. Next step is the planer and chips. He likes to be where the action is. So he moved up here to the fork left. Some of you guys have seen this before. This is what we call the big gulp. It's our big top and bottom planer or more appropriately called, it's a flattening planer. What we do is we feed boards in on this side. They will travel just like on a hand facer until it gets to this head. Then it will face off the bottom of the board. Then it will travel down to this cutter head and this takes off the top. The reason we hand faced those boards originally is because they had a lot of wobble to them and I couldn't guarantee that they were gonna sit flat on this bed as it, as it initially feeds through and the last thing I wanna do is have it rock. Because if it rocks a little bit, this thing's going to take it off. But it may come out looking like a boat propeller. In case you're wondering, it's a three-phase, 460 volt, uh, around 60 horsepower. This thing will take a quarter of an inch off per side of a board. Considering it's doing a top and a bottom, that's a half inch of wood removed per pass. I don't know if you can tell it, but I enjoy working with Big Gulp. I like these machines, kind of the old Tim Taylor approach. More horsepower, more fun, let the big dog eat. Oh, what a beautiful sunset. It's getting dark, time to go home. <laughs>